children, a miracle no matter the way viewed upon, whether fueled by faith and religion or driven by another force, the gift of life is one that shouldn't be taken lightly. I was raised in a Catholic family where I was taught that science can only explain so much, but the birth of a child sends a shockwave through the universe, causing events that no mere human could possibly understand. A child's mind, as adults see it, is a vast and incredible land of hopes, dreams, and even fears. But one question that has haunted me for years is how did I learn to fear things that supposedly aren't there? Many children come up with stories about monsters hiding under their beds or living in their closets. But with time, the monsters seem to disappear. The imagination begins to fade and the child that used to be becomes an adult. The only experience that remains are from that of the physical world. What I wouldn't give to just experience the physical world. I can't remember how old I was when I first saw the eyes in my closet, piercing red slits in the deep, seemingly never-ending darkness. I remember waking up to what sounded like a faint creak coming from my closet door, slowly opening. Still half asleep, I sat up rubbing my eyes, trying to figure out what was making so much noise in the night. I didn't see the eyes at first when I looked at the closet from my bed. I don't remember leaving the door open, I said under my breath. I kicked the sheets off and slowly approached the door to close it. As I got closer, a horrible stench filled the air in my room. Oh, I gasped as I grabbed my nose and covered my mouth. What is that? That's when I heard a low growl emanating from the abyss. A cold chill shot through my entire body, and the hair on the back of my neck stood up. I peered into the opening and saw two glowing red eyes glaring back at me. I don't know why, but I felt a, set, a strange sense of bravery toward the monster threatening me in my own room. Who's a good boy? I asked softly. A low guttural growl came from the darkness. Feed me. I must have turned pale as a ghost when I heard that terrifying voice. Who? Me? I stammered. The eye squinted as if frustrated. Don't fear me, child. I mean you no harm. What are you? I asked. I am a friend who needs a favor. Would you help me, friend? My parents always taught me to help others when they're in need. What's the worst that could possibly happen? All right. Well, first off, I'm Eddie. Do you have a name? You can call me Dip. I could have sworn I saw a toothy grin in the darkness as it gave me its name. What can I help you with? I asked meekly. Well, young one, I am hurt and I am so hungry. I haven't eaten in a very long time. Oh, that's easy, I said with a reassuring tone. I can get you something from the kitchen. No, no. I require something a little more substantial. Like what? I asked nervously. What about that boy that bothers you at school? Ian, I believe his name is. You can't eat a person, I laughed. I, I won't do that. But he hurts you, and the adults don't care. Let's make a deal, Eddie. You invite Ian over to play, and I will make sure he doesn't bother you again. Y you mean scare him? I asked. Yes, yes, scare him. Of course. I felt a sense of ease when Dip agreed to scare my school boy instead of eating him. 
Okay, I said. I'll ask my mom if I can invite him over tomorrow. Dip growled, seemingly in approval. Good. We will see him tomorrow, then. The stench from the closet became noticeably more potent, and I felt myself starting to choke, and I began to feel lightheaded. All I could hear was the low rumble of Dip's voice. Tomorrow, then. Tomorrow, then. Eddie, time to wake up, I heard my mother calling from the kitchen. I sat up in my bed and quickly looked toward the closet door. It was closed. What a, what a crazy dream, I laughed to myself. Eddie, I heard my mom opening the door to my room. I have, oh my, what is that awful smell? I felt the blood drain from my face. I didn't dream that at all. It, it must be my clothes or something, mom. I'll, I'll take care of them after school. My mom's face was visually disgusted and definitely annoyed. I'll do it now, sweetheart. Hey, mom. Would it be okay if I invited Ian Towns over after school today? Ian Towns? My mother asked. Of course, honey. He's such a nice boy. He has been such a good friend to you for as long as I can remember. If only she knew. Ian Towns was the kind of kid that would throw a baseball at the back of your head and then walk you home just to make himself look good to parents. But the next day at school, him and his friends would make jokes and trip you down the hall and say, no one will believe you, I own you. The teachers loved him and parents couldn't get enough of him. Even the teachers would turn a blind eye to the torture Ian would give out to innocent kids. No one would stand up to him. He was the biggest kid in school and I don't think his friends even liked him that much. They just stayed close out of fear. Okay, thanks mom. I shot a quick glance at the door. I am definitely not going in there, I muttered to myself. I went down into the laundry room and pulled some clothes out of the dryer. After I was dressed, I grabbed my backpack and hurried off to school. Bye mom, see you later, I yelled before slamming the door behind me. I walked to school at a quicker pace than usual, probably because I knew that I would have to face what I thought was my worst nightmare. Standing in front of the school, Ian and his friends were shoving each other into the building. Typical, I thought to myself. What a bunch of idiots. As I approached, I heard Ed Ian's obnoxious voice. Aww, Eddie boy! Hi, Ian. I said unimpressed. Oh, Eddie boy's got an attitude, he jeered. Let's teach him some respect. Ian's friends snickered. They grabbed me by the arms, and Ian punched me in the stomach. I doubled over in pain as his friends released my arms, laughing and mocking me. A tear trickled down my cheek as I tried to catch my breath. You, you're such a jerk, I gasped. Ha <laughs> ha, Eddie boy, when will you learn? Let's go, guys, I'm bored. Ian stepped over me, landed one final kick, and disappeared into the school. The school bell rang, so I picked myself up, collected my things, and dragged myself into the building. I've got him right where I want him, I thought to myself. The rest of the day resulted as I expected. I got in Ian's way as much as possible, just so I could force him to beat me hard enough to make him walk me home. The last class of the day was phys ed, and Ian and I, of course, we're in the same class. Perfect, I muttered under my breath. Today, we'll be playing dodgeball, my gym teacher, Mr. Marsh, announced. Separate into two teams, and let's get started. I'm not going to be on Eddie's team, yelled Ian. It's going to be a lot more fun for me than it is for you, Eddie boy. I wouldn't be so sure, bud, I smirked. Oh, Eddie's got a mouth on him today, folks. Ian grabbed a ball from the bin and launched it at my face. I quickly ducked, but wasn't expecting Ian to charge at me and lend a swift uppercut right to my chin. I collapsed to the floor, holding my face, fighting back tears and trying to maintain the anger and hatred I held for this vile human being. Here, buddy, 
Let me help you up, Ian said sarcastically. I tried to push him away, but he was too strong. No, no, I mean it. Let me help you. He pulled me to my feet and looked over toward Mr. Marsh, who was trying to hide the, a grin on his face. Mr. Marsh, Eddie's not looking too good. Would it be okay if we left class early? I should probably walk him home. Mr. Marsh, still grinning, nodded slightly. Just don't rough him up too much more, he sneered. Don't worry, I won't. Ian waved and threw his arm around me and we walked away. The walk home could not have been more humiliating. Ian would nudge and trip me as we would walk with the occasional oops or watch your step, buddy. I just had to focus on what lay on the other side of my closet door. When we finally made it to my house, I received one final push up the stairs and a ladies first. I turned around and looked toward Ian. Would you like to come in? I asked. Th there's something I'd like to show you. Ian rolled his eyes. Whatever, he huffed. It better be good. I don't want you wasting my time. Oh no. It's definitely worth your attention, I remarked. I opened the door to my house and we stepped in. Mom, I'm home, I yelled. No response. That, that's weird, I said to myself. She must be out shopping or something. I closed the door behind us and I beckoned Ian. Come on, I said. It'll be quick, I promise. I couldn't wait to see his face when he realized the joke was on him. It's right over here in the closet. I opened the door and all there was were my clothes hanging there. What the hell? Ian asked annoyed. You're wasting my time. Next thing I knew, I was on the floor seeing stars. After a minute, the back of my head began to throb. He must have hit me with something in the back of the head. Then I noticed an overwhelming stench seeping from the closet and a low growl emanated it's perfect, I heard Dip say. What is that? I heard Ian ask nervously. Before I knew what was happening, I could hear Ian screaming. A large black furred face emerged from my closet. The face resembled that of a wolf with giant sharp white teeth and haunting red eyes. Only half of the monster's body was visible and it noticed its one paw was lame. It grabbed Ian by the throat with one snap of its giant jaws. Ian squirmed and tried to get away, but the monster's grasp was too great. I couldn't do anything but watch in horror as Ian was dragged farther and farther back into my closet. I awoke from a banging at the front door. I sat up and realized it was dark out and my closet door was closed. I picked myself up off the floor and made my way out of the room. I saw my mother standing there, talking to a police officer. Oh, there he is, I heard her say. Eddie, this officer says that Ian Towns didn't make it home tonight. Did he end up coming over today? Petrified, I shook my head. I haven't seen Ian in a while. The police officer looked from me to my mother and thanked us for our time and left. Things changed for me after that day. I didn't hear from Dip or see the glowing red eyes in my closet. It was just a regular old closet. I did, however, suffer from horrible night terrors, so my mother decided to take me to see a therapist. After years of therapy, I was able to graduate high school and go to college, where I met the love of my life. I was finally feeling like a normal person. We moved into a house closer to my mom, and I proposed to my girlfriend. After a month before we were to be married, I bought my fiancé an early wedding gift, a Brussels Griffon puppy we named Gadget. Everything was perfect, until Gadget started, started to scratch at the closet 
in the bedroom. A strange, pungent smell seeped from the space under the closet. I could hear a low growl from the other side of the door. Maybe I'll just put a lock on the closet door.